So I, I don't know if it's uh, Yulia or Timurs who is we are presenting. Both, we are okay, so thank you very much for the opportunity to present a paper and participate in this workshop, which is uh, just great after three months of confinement in Spain. So it's a little, very, very social for me now. Um, so my name is Yulia Panamareva. I'm, uh, employed in uh, Autonomous University in Barcelona and uh, together with the team of co-authors I'm presenting you the uh, literature review that we have done on diversity in top management teams. So Timur uh, will also join the presentation, he's uh, with us today and Carl will tackle all the difficult questions that you may have. So he's joining as well. Virginia unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, so to to start the conversation about uh, diversity, uh, you, you don't need to go really far. In the wake of the ongoing social unrest that is happening, that has sparked all around the US and now it's uh, uh, emerging worldwide, uh, diversity is a heated topic and many corporations have um, found themselves caught up in the storm over racism and uh, not the least in their executive suits. So here I have uh, some of the recent headlines from Financial Times that discuss the lack of diversity at the very top of organizations. Uh, the, uh, the debate has also sparked all over social media. Here I have a recent tweet that has gained a lot of uh, traction by uh, an investor from and, um, and a diversity activist from Silicon Valley that has mocked the recent attention that corporate leaders have been paying and uh, to support of uh, Black Lives Matter movement by pointing out of the lack of the very diversity that they were supporting so hard in their executive suits. Um, so in that, that practical importance and relevance of the topic has motivated our interest in the subject and uh, what we're interested in is in is uh, top management diversity um, in the broad sense we, we look at the cultural diversity as uh, an umbrella term that incorporates ethnic national cultural background of the top executives and uh, typically uh, diversity is, uh, well, it has gained some attraction in the literature in the context of uh, boards and uh, directorships. However, the cultural diversity in top management teams has received substantially less attention from the researchers, yet it is very much discussed in the media and uh, social, social networks as well, and corporations do pay attention to that. Um, Cultural diversity um, uh, is, um, is one of the most visible and obvious attributes that you, you observe on the members. So perhaps when we look at the top management teams, what we see uh, that appears right away is gender and cultural diversity. And we see a lot of conversation about gender, yet the cultural diversity appears to be far less um, uh, discussed in the in the debate today and um, top management teams present a very unique context to uh, observe cultural diversity because first uh, of their impact on organizations uh, so this is the context where effects of diversity will be pronounced the most and some studies indicate that culture explains 30 to 45 percent of the decision making that individuals have. So by looking at the cultural diversity in the uh, upper echelons, in the, in, the, uh, in the members of the dominant coalition, you can see the true impact of these uh, demographic characteristics. Um, and there has been a very large body of research within the upper echelons perspective uh, talking about demographic diversity as a general term. So typically studies talk about multiple aspects of um, demographic diversity, including age, gender, education, something right away observable, nationality, ethnicity, and so on, race. Um, however, they don't really distinguish 
the difference in the impact and antecedents of each of these distinct attributes of demographic diversity. And um, the motivation to focus particularly on the cultural diversity is its visibility and impact that can uh, distinguish itself from other demographic attributes like age or education. So within the context of top management teams where the age variation is not very significant, uh, social, well, class dis um, differences are not very significant, social background and so on, it really uh, boils down to gender and diversity as the two most visible and obvious elements of, um, of diversity inclusions and inclusion within the top management team. So what we want to look at is the, is the cultural diversity. And um, what we are interested in is taking a stock on, on what has been done within the field, mapping it and uh, trying to reduce the gap between the practical importance, relevance and appearance of the topic within the debate and what we have found a uh, apparent lack of knowledge and uh, theory in regards to this important element of uh, diversity. So we, uh, we, have an, uh, we do a narrative review um, and uh, we search in Scopus database by uh, looking at the studies at the intersection of two big blocks of the subject. So we identify uh, keywords related to block one, which is top management team. So we use keywords such as uh, executive uh, board, senior management, top team, and so on. And the second block is related to the keywords indicating to the diversity, referring to diversity. So uh, cultural diver uh, heterogeneity, uh, cultural diversity, culture, uh, and um, uh, altogether, uh, only 602 studies have appeared in the intersection of these two blocks of the keywords, uh, which after careful screening of their abstracts have uh, been reduced to 75 full articles. So some of these studies have mentioned both uh, top management teams and diversity. However, they haven't really looked at the top management team diversity rather than rather than that they ex explored uh, each of these topics as a separate subject so independently uh, but we were more interested as in it as a phenomena uh, after reading carefully the 75 articles we have uh, reduced our sample to 32 as we have found out that many of the studies that claim that they do uh, research on cultural diversity within top management teams actually look at other demographic elements such as education or age that they claim or they call them uh, cultural diversity. And then um, based on these 32 studies that we found that they have matched our uh, search criteria and sampling criteria, uh, we, have did the, uh, we have done the um, ancestry um, uh, search by looking at the references. So our fin uh, uh, final sample uh, surprisingly uh, came out as rather small, 54 articles which we have studied in detail. So here I have um, uh, a map of the relationships identified within the 54 studies that we have had in our sample and uh, you can see that the map is rather dense meaning that uh, the top management team cultural diversity has been explored from many different angles uh, studies have looked at the three well following the patterns that we found in the data we can see that uh, studies have looked mainly uh, on the antecedents outcomes and also contingency factors uh, that influence the effect of um, uh, top management team cultural diversity. And these have been explored at multiple levels, at the country level, at the firm and individual as well. Uh, what is um, distinct from other fields is the um, number of um, uh, potential mediators and moderators that have been tackled in the previous research on multiple level and we see also that uh, some of the antecedents of cultural diversity 
uh, come up as the effects of, uh, of the same uh, phenomena, which suggests that causality uh, could, be, um, uh, could be both, um, or not necessarily is a linear one. So it can be a self-reinforcing cycle. If you increase diversity of your company, your top management team becomes more diverse, and they make more decisions towards further internationalization. So to sum up, what we, ha what we see by mapping all the studies in one single map of the field in, the, in this uh, figure uh, is that the, uh, the studies have been very broad. There have been many different variables explored. Uh, some of them have not been found support or some of them have been just conceptualized and not empirically tested. Uh, and yet, having only 54 studies, some of which are conceptual, I think we have uh, two conceptual studies, um, suggests that the field is really at the early stage of its development and needs uh, an agenda to form, uh, to, to advance our knowledge in the, uh, on the phenomena. So Timur will talk now about what is our suggestion of how we see the development of the field in the future. Okay, so uh, thanks, uh, Yule, for um, the start. Um, so what um, we are seeing in this, uh, what type of patterns we are seeing, what we think can be done. So first of all, uh, what we see is a lot of research dealing with nationality. It's, it still remains to be one of the most common ways of measuring uh, cultural diversity in top management teams. And that is, um, in some contexts, it might be an interesting concept, but in the majority of contexts, we, we don't really have national diversity. We have ethnic diversity. There are many societies in the world where is they, that lived with ethnic diversity for many, many years. And yet this not has come up into the agenda or not has been studied. Also regional diversity. Only recently articles have started to talk about the cultural differences that exist between different regions. I mean, just to look at Spain would, would be one um, opportunity to look into regional differences and how they play out in, in the top management team context. So I think that what, what we are really suggesting is a more nuanced way of looking at what culture is and what, what is national culture in relationship to the ethnic culture or the regional culture. So a, a more broader and at the same time sp spreading the, the way one conceptualizes culture. Then also looking at the, the, the cultural diversity beyond the demography. One thing here is that what can be your national culture might not necessarily be perceived like such by people in your team. So perceptional aspects of cultural diversity is also a very important would be important way forward because what you would gain by asking people rather than measuring it uh, in, in terms of looking at the financial report and so on, what are the perceptions of cultural diversity? That's another point. And also acknowledging the, the multiple dimensions of cultural differences. So maybe it's a, it's a team composed of the, just Germans, but maybe cultural diversity in this German team is very much dependent on their regional differences. Next slide. Um, then uh, talking about the different type of theories used here. What we see quite a lot, it's an upper echelon theory still being dominated. Of course, top management team is a focal point here, but we don't have much diversity. So uh, one potential way forward would be to look, at, for example, at a resource-based view, looking at the resource aspects of cultural diversity, not just looking at how it is uh, enacted or, or emerges in top management team context, but also looking at what type of resource each different culture represent for a specific type of organization. Uh, next slide. Um, we also see quite a lot of papers that are only dealing with one or two dimensions of demography and uh, not looking at the combination of things. And I mean, here we can, we, we say, I, can, I can just think that the fuzzy set analysis could be one way forward here to looking at the combination of culture with other dimensions. Also looking at the fault lines when different groups are divided into different subgroups, culture specific or ethnicity specific or age specific and so on. So looking at the culture in a, in a, as a, in a 
surrounded by other aspects and a combination of those. So this interaction between things is important. And then we have the modeling part. And in the modeling part, does, you know, there is, a, there is a very strong argument in Hambrick and Finkelstein that uh, demographic differences will be related to the firm outcomes because of decision making that is performed in the top management teams. Now the question is, is financial performance really the theoretically right outcome of cultural diversity or not? And that's one of the major questions here. Maybe it is not about f financial performance that is an outcome of top management team cultural diversity. Maybe there are other aspects, innovative capacity, entrepreneurial orientation, failure. I mean, one has to be a little bit more bold than just claiming that it's always a positive effect, right? I mean, the diversity can also lead to failure in many things, and especially cultural diversity that, that, that divides people and creates a lot of dynamic dynamics and problems with dynamics in the team. And also, again, I mean, everyone talks about the opening the black box and everyone tries to open the black box. Most of the studies that we see are primarily based on surveys. Nobody has ever observed or much, there are no, not much observational studies about what's really going on in top management teams that are culturally diverse. So more, more experimental design and more observational type of studies. Uh, and also looking at the cyclical models. So thank you very much, we are out of time. Thank you very much.